I think that the words we choose, the uh, conversations that we have, are what lead to the action. And, in, and many people are now saying that conversation is work, that, com that work is not only making something with your hand, but that most of the work of a manager, for example, is in conversation. So, the, so we've, we've often thought that conversation is something that's kind of separate, that we have a conversation and then we do something. But uh, now we believe that the conversation itself is where the work gets done. The goal of becoming a learning organization is to make sure that we are not just worried about executing, but that every time we execute action, we learn from that so that we can do it better the next time. So there's, there's a difference between the idea of being an organization that is efficient and effective and one that is learning. And that learning, we believe, comes in conversation. So, in the past, much of the work has been done as individuals. Now we see that organizations primarily work through teams. So I know a basketball team is probably not so uh, well known as football or soccer, but in the United States, basketball is a sport that's important. And so there are a number of people on the team, and they, they play another team. And and the, it is not the action of just one of those members to make the goal on the team, but all of the team members need to work together to make that one person make the goal. So the conversation they have might be at halftime, that they come together and say, okay, we're doing this, now we need to do that. And that action, that talk, then leads to the next goal. Without that talk about how we work together, where, who's going to pass the ball to whom, how we're going to get there, without that talk, the team wouldn't work. So it, conversation is the way that the team creates the next steps it will take, the way it will interact with the customer, the way it will learn about the customer requirements. All of that happens in, within the team. Uh, Scott Page wrote a wonderful book called The Difference, and in there he said what we need is to uh, have different ways of solving a problem. If we bring a group together, we need to have in that group people who have, who have different, uh, we call it in English, rules of thumb that they go about. So it turns out that different disciplines, like engineering, has rules of thumb that are different than a physician has or different than an attorney has, or different than a teacher has. Right? So they, uh, they come at a problem in a very different way. And that's the most helpful thing if you're trying to solve a problem in a group, is to come at it from different ways. Maybe at some time you have been with a friend and uh, you have a problem and you really want to talk to the friend about that problem. And so you start explaining, well, this happened and then this and here's what I was thinking. And then you say, oh, never mind. I think I see the answer. Mm -hmm. Because in trying to explain it to you, I have organized it in my mind in a way that I now see how the pieces fit together. So that's that I learn actually through the talking. Now, I, when I say that, I don't mean that we don't learn by reading. At least I hope we do, because I would hope people would read my books and read my articles. So I, I don't want to eliminate reading. But if I have read something, an article that I found very, very useful, and then it, if I don't talk about it to someone, it will go out of my mind. So you could try a little experiment to read something and then explain what you read to someone else right after you read it. And you will see that that knowledge stays in your head longer because you've connected it in your talking to other things that you know. Groups learn through conversation, but conversation really needs to be designed, it needs to be planned rather than, uh, than just whatever anyone wants to say. So there are skills we can learn that increase conversation. 
work happens now in organizations is primarily in teams. And that happens in teams because the, the problems we now address in our work are very much more complex than problems people would have had years ago. It often takes people from several disciplines coming together to solve a really difficult problem. So the question then is how do you, how do you integrate all of that knowledge so that we can now act on it? And that happens through the conversation in the team. I think informal learning is very important in organizations. And I also think um, classroom learning is very important in organizations. Because I've so many years been a professor, I wouldn't want to say don't have a class because that <laughs> you take all my job away. So, so I think having uh, the formal learning is important, the informal learning is important. The conversations that go on in teams are important. All of that needs to be. I think we can't, I think the problem has been that organizations in the past have just relied on formal learning. And they had this idea that if every person in the organization got trained so that they could do their job perfectly, that the organization would be able to learn. But it turns out that's not true. It's not, it, I not only have to learn myself, but we have to learn as a team. So if we've done a project and it's gone really well, or maybe it's gone really poorly, what we need to do is to come together as a team after that project is done and say, all right, it, it didn't go well, let's talk about what are the things that went wrong and why did they go wrong and what do we need to do differently next time. If a team doesn't do that, then they won't learn. Even if every single person knows exactly what to do and how to do it, if the team itself doesn't learn what it needs to do differently, the organization won't learn. Yes, that's uh, the, the phenomenon of how do, you, how do you keep the information that people are retiring have, how do you keep that in the organizations, is a very interesting uh, problem. And, and let me say first about how not to do it, because the first idea most people have is let's do an interview with that person and let's write down everything they say and then let's put that in a database. But what we know about that is that no one will ever go look in the database. They, they, they just don't do that. So we've had to find different ways. So for me, the best way to do that is that if, if you are the expert in some topic and there are several people who are not quite as expert as you, we, I would call them next experts. So they're the next people in line to be experts, right? So when you get ready to retire, then if I bring three or four or five of those next experts and sit down with you, then they can ask you questions about your knowledge. They know enough about what you know to know what questions to ask you. Now, it turns out that if, if this is the amount of knowledge that an expert has, this much of it, almost 90% of it, the other, other people know as well. There's only 10% of it that is really unique to you. So I don't need to know everything you know when you leave. I need to know what's that 10%. And that 10% is usually information that you've learned because things happen. Maybe they only happen once every three years or once every five years. But you've been an expert long enough that they have happened to you. So now you know how to deal with that problem. It's those problems we need. So if we bring this one expert together with several people who are the next experts, and we say to them, what's the most difficult problem that you solved? Tell us about that. And then they have a conversation about it. That's where the knowledge gets transferred. So it doesn't get transferred by I, I write it down and save it. It gets transferred by from the mind of the expert to the minds of the next experts. That's the way the transfer is most effectively done. Space is, is one of my very favorite topics. And, um, I, did a, I had a very interesting experience um, with the, na the Institute for, for National Working Life in, um, in Sweden. 
because everyone that came to get coffee could hear the conversations in the conference room, people began to know more about what others were doing. Right? And because they ran into somebody when they had coffee, they began to understand others' projects. So when I went back to interview, people said, uh, first of all, they, they went up to others' offices and stood in the office door very much more often because now they begin to know everyone. They knew much more about other projects that people were doing. I think, uh, I think increased almost 54% knew know more about what other projects. That meant they could also help others with their projects. They could offer ideas. They could answer questions and so forth with, with their projects. And they were, they were more together on the mission of the whole uh, National Institute for Working Life. They were, they were more clear about what their purpose was because they had talked more about it. So this space that they created to have a researcher square changed the, their working life in many, many ways. I think it is that important. Uh, I think it is important to, uh, to make sure people interact and space is, is one of the ways to do that. When a team starts, if you bring that team together, so they get a good start together, that they will be more effective. So many organizations do that. Even if the team's going to be virtual, they will bring them together initially. The research I've seen also says you not only need to bring them together initially, you need to bring them together periodically so that they work virtually and then they come together. Then they work virtually and then they come together. And what that interval is, could differ. It could be uh, every six months. It could be once a year. But companies are finding that they have to bring people together if they want if they want them to work as a team. Otherwise, they don't. They are not. Um, they're not connected enough. So it's that issue of trust. It's that issue of knowing what you're doing so that I would be able to help you. Like the researcher square, I know enough about you to be able to help. Those things occur when people come together. So I am a great, uh, I'm a great believer in bringing people together virtually, but I'm a, also a great believer in that they also have to come together face to face.